Hi! Um, my name's Maggie. The algorithm decided to feed me up to people over the last couple days, which is pretty cool. I was not expecting <laughs> that. It looks like most of the people who found my videos are Chiefs fans and Niners fans. That may have something to do with the fact that I don't think Ravens fans or Lions fans are looking for reaction videos to those games right about now. This is a call that could determine the whole game right here. Sneed! It's out. Here's Purdy with a lot of time. Steps into one. Watching deep. Going for Brandon Ayuk. It is. Oh, he caught it off the ricochet! They were fun for me to watch as somebody who had a rooting interest in at least one of them, but in general was just watching to have fun. And uh, I think it might not have been fun for some people. But thanks to all you guys who watched, who liked, who commented. You guys are like super nice. I had the impression that YouTube commenters were all going to be assholes. And other than the guy who told me I have a lazy eye and the guy who told me I have a really big forehead, you've all been really nice. I mean, you told me my team sucked, but that's fine. That's whatever. No, he doesn't make it. Wide right. The person who said I have a Tina Fey with a potty mouth vibe, I think that's clearly pretty spot on. My son and I were logging on to Peacock to watch a lovely game with Chris Collinsworth and Mike Tirico. My little avatar on Peacock is Liz Lemon. I'm 37, please don't make me go to Brooklyn. And my son says, how did you get that custom picture of yourself as an avatar? Does the app let you do that? And I just looked at him and I'm like, you know that's not me, right? That's, that's Liz Lemon, that's a fictional character. And he just went, eh. The Lions game was pretty crushing by the end, especially given that I'm not actually a Lions fan. You know, it's very easy to watch that and second guess some of the coaching decisions. The issue is that none of those coaching decisions were surprising if you paid any attention to the Lions over the course of the season, which I paid some attention. I don't watch a ton of NFC football just because I don't have much reason to, but enough of their games came across my radar that I knew a little bit about the team and a little bit about the coach. Yeah, I told the offense that we were, we were going down 141 left. We're going to go down and score, and then we're going to go for two and finish this game out. I told him that, and so that's what we were doing. This is what Dan Campbell does. He's very aggressive, and it has been successful for them. And I think it's been a cool choice as a coach to give his players the sense that he believes in them, that they can make fourth and two, fourth and three, if they're in the middle of the field. They also apparently don't have a lot of trust in their kicker. Of course, I don't get the sense that San Francisco does either. No good. And it proves to you that I really don't know a lot about the NFC. The fact that I said the Niners had a really good kicker. I think I was confused with someone else. But that sort of thing about me watching football at this point is, you know, a lot of people talk shit on a woman watching football and thinking she knows about football. Like that's just a cultural phenomenon. I'm surprised I didn't get that much of that in the comments either. I'm one of those people who tries to go into things knowing what I don't know and not falling too victim to Dunning-Kruger type stuff. So I know I don't know a ton about the NFC. I know I also don't know a ton about defensive schemes. So I'm working on both of those things. That's for the off season. But yeah, when you're a team that goes for it on fourth and short and you don't have a kicker that you trust can make those sorts of field goals, making those choices makes sense no matter what people were saying at home. So I get why Dan Campbell did it. I think it might behoove him to show a little bit of flexibility in certain situations. The problem with the first one had a lot to do with momentum and the game really just turned for them so fast there. And it's something I've said a lot watching Bill's games where I'll see McDermott slows down. He goes into prevent defense type schemes when the Bills are up by two scores. And the number of times I'm shouting at the TV, like two scores is not enough. It's just not. So in that situation, get the third score because you saw how fast the Niners were able to turn that around. Like they scored two touchdowns in, you know, three minutes. It was just, fluky and it happens. That's how easy it is to catch up, especially when you're playing a team as good as the Niners. And the second field goal, tie the game. Try and tie the game. Your team has not been playing well. Take the points. Now is not 
the time to risk it. But that's me. I'm a naturally pretty risk averse person. Dan Campbell and I would not get along personally, I don't think. I think he'd stress me out. I did love the clip that was going around the other day of George Kittle just insisting on people laughing at his they had us in the first half, I'm not gonna lie joke. I can't wait at the end of the game, I'm gonna say, hey, they had us in the first half, I'm not gonna lie. He's such a dork. <laughs> I can't wait till after the game and I get to say, you know what, they had us in the first half. <laughs> I think George Kittle alone is the main reason I'm rooting for the Niners. Let's be honest, he cracks me up. First of all, he seems way older than I think he actually is. Like, he seems like he's my age. He's not my age, but he's just, he's this dorky guy who's like, I want the meme to be true. Take that into existence. As far as Chiefs Ravens, I bitch a lot about how the Chiefs have really acted like they've had a chip on their shoulder the last few weeks. They asked for it. Yeah. And they got what they asked for. Uh, but you know, whatever they've been doing to motivate themselves, it's worked. And if they have to tell themselves they're the underdogs, even though they've been in the Super Bowl, what is it? Five of the six years Mahomes has been a quarterback? Four? So if the Chiefs want to go into the Super Bowl, continuing this run of like, everybody counted us out, you know, they're not totally wrong. I don't think people ever counted them out because they're the Chiefs. They're amazing. Their receivers have not been good this year. MVS apparently decided to play well again. He gets the protection. He goes long and on his back to ice it is Marquez Valdez Scantling. That's awesome. Good job. You, you got somebody out there catching balls reliably now other than Rice and Kelsey. That's something you need, something the Bills need too. There's Allen going for the home run ball. Diving attempt! Did he catch it? Sure field! He says my arms are underneath there. They say incomplete. Oh, and for the Chiefs fans, in the comments who were yelling at me for complaining about holds, saying no way was there holding in the Bills game, no way was there holding in the Ravens game, you know, refs, blah, blah, blah. I don't think the refs honestly should have been calling a whole lot of holding in those games. I think it just slows down the momentum. It shouldn't be ref ball. You shouldn't be counting on the refs to save you or screw you in the playoffs. You shouldn't. But there's a clip that's been going around, which I understand that you guys are trying to show that Pacheco got kicked. He did. That shouldn't have happened. But when you show that clip, you are showing the most blatant hold. That's the shit I was talking about. So everybody holds. Let's hope that the Super Bowl is not determined by holds, DPI, or just the refs in general. He's trying to run a little whip route, show, sell the shallow cross. I know he's got that right hand. I get it. I just. I just think in this moment, oh man. Cause that's no fun. Okay, I think I've rambled about enough stuff now. So I'm gonna keep trying to do these videos. Maybe the Ravens and Lions fans will show up eventually. I doubt this will get 10,000 views, but who knows? And if you're watching, feel free to subscribe. Feel free to hit like, do all those YouTube-y things. I'm new to this. Whatever you guys wanna do to send more views my way, that's cool too. So if you guys have any suggestions for other videos I could do during the months when the Bills aren't playing, feel free to leave those in the comments. Oh, and I almost forgot, go Bills.